Let's focus on the top portion of the throat. And take your hot knife and just cut that back, not quite a half inch, just so when we get to the point where you're going to sew around here, it'll give a little. This is a very important step. Deb's going to explain right it one more time. Here. This is where your cut in is at. Cut open there. Not quite a half inch. You want to come in your half inch and you want to back tack here. And you want to turn right at the back of that clip. And then you'll kind of veer off into your half inch. It's important to follow what Deb's doing here because it'll make it much easier for installing the boot top when we come to that step in the near future here. We're going to go over this one more time just so that we can uh, help you understand exactly what we're talking about. Okay, when you, when you get your kit, it will be cut down and around like such. You want to come down with your back tack right behind. You want to clip that in, but with a hot gun or something that's not going to let it fray into your back tacking. And then turn just as you get past it, and then you want to veer into your half inch. Now continue sewing down the backbone a half inch away from that raw edge. Deb's going by sight here, but you can put a piece of masking tape on the throat of your machine to ensure that you're sewing a half inch from the raw edge or use a swing gauge. Now reverse the sail cover around so that you can work from the outside and do the top stitch of the flat filled seam. I find it easiest to start at the big end to do the center spine top stitching. That way it's done and out of your way. And you have your turn here. You just want to take a couple of back stitches here and back tack it. As a guide, we'll use one of the edges of a foot and we'll guide that edge on top of the uh, fold, pulling the panel apart as we sew. This is a semi-flat filled seam, so you need to make sure that you're sewing through that half-inch fold on the bottom side of the material. You want to push your seam all the way through the left side, keeping the right edge of your foot along the spine. You want to kind of pull that seam apart. Now this is not as difficult as it looks, and remember that uh, you, the, this is where the bulk of the material is, at the throat of the uh, sail cover. Uh, so take your time, go slow, as Deb is doing here. Uh, you don't need a lot of throat space as long as you roll that material up as she did earlier. This is the right side of the material, this, so this is the outside of the sail cover. This is the stitch you're going to see. Notice that she's not going super fast here because we want to ensure that we're pulling that seam apart. All right, we're done with that. And there's what it looks like when you're done. Notice the logo is on the top side, which is the right side. Now we're going to concentrate on the boot top. Cut this all out with a hot knife so there's no need really to. Put a double hem on it. You can just single hem. We're going to just hem the uh, two um, small ends and the top edge with approximately a half inch hem. And she's just using a, a blunt object to crease it well. You can use double sided tape here. In fact, we recommend using double sided tape to hold it in place. Deb will not, but uh, that's a good idea to do. Now we sew it with a straight stitch and bar tack at each end. So the other small end with the straight stitch and bar tack at the beginning and the end, as we did previously. Now we're 
we're doing the long top edge. Bar tacking at the beginning and the end again. Once that's done, we'll take that over to our sail cover. She's going to turn the sail cover so that working from the wrong side, which is the inside here. Then we'll match up that boot top to the raw edge of the uh, sail cover. The hem of the boot top is against the outer surface of the main body panel. And she's starting from the starboard side there, matching up the edges, and just sews a half inch inside of there. This will again will be a semi-flat filled seam. Deb did not use double-sided tape to base this boot top to the uh, throat of the uh, sail cover, but uh, we recommend doing that to make it easier. This is where you yeah. made the notch earlier, and this My is why, so that it will lay flat. And you sew it down to the boot. And then you'll sew right through where you made your tip. You might want to back tack there just a little bit, just to strengthen that spine seam. When we get to the end of the uh, throat, we'll stop and do a back tap. Back tap at the, end. the next step, we'll do the semi-flat felt like seam or the top stitch on. here with that We're boot top. Take it. We want a top stitch on the boom piece itself. So. What we're going to do is we're going to start down here at this end, and we're only going to have probably a half inch to three quarter inch hem on this side, just so that your top stitching will continue across. What Deb's going to do is she's going to pre-fold this half inch uh, seam here on the on the uh, boot top, and then uh, sew across, doing the flat felled seam where the boot top is attached to the throat of the sail cover. It's a good idea to use double-sided tape. Again, Deb's not going to do that here. She's not used to using it in all applications. Um, but uh, if you crease it well, it's not really necessary. So she's going to sew right along this uh, uh, folded hem here. And then she will come into the sail cover. So that's why you want to keep this uh, stitch fairly close to the uh, uh, fold because you're actually uh, following into the sail cover and you're going to do a top stitch. So here it is going into the sail cover, and she continues on, pulling apart that uh, seam as she sews, uh, using a foot as a guide right along that stitch. So that uh, center foot in the Sailrite 111 is the guide for this top stitch. Here she is going over this line, and continues to sew, pulling the panel apart, ensuring that she's sewing along that uh, first stitch of the semi flat felt seam. And you notice we're ensuring that we're also sewing that half inch fold on the bottom side. Your sail cover at the aft end will probably be too long. If so, place the cover over the furled sail in a normal manner. Determine where you want the end of this cover to be, and at a minimum, it should stop just after the very back of the sail. Now make a cutting mark five inches further back beyond your intended finished end of the cover. The extra allowance will provide for him or a sleeve, then cut off the excess fabric. After the position's marked, lay your sail cover on a floor flat, folded together, and then draw a line 90 degrees down from the backbone. Now the hem to this edge, this is the end of the boom, is sometimes not necessarily straight. In fact, it's usually a v slight V to it. So when you do the double hem here, because this does really require a double hem, you may get a little wrinkle right at the spine. That's quite acceptable and that's normal because it's actually a, not a straight uh, hem all the way across. So don't be worried about that. Just uh, try to work out as many wrinkles as possible. Uh, when you're done sewing, it'll look beautiful anyway. If you plan on putting a, um, a leech line in a sleeve here, then you need to make this hem a little bit bigger. And it's probably a good idea to run the leech line through it uh, before you sew it and baste it in place. So this is already basted in place and she even used a staple to hold it in place at that uh, spline where there's a little bit more wrinkling going on. That's an, a good idea to use a staple to help hold things in place, especially where they want to pull apart like right here at the spline where there's a lot more wrinkles because of the fact that it's not a straight a little bit hem of a all the way across. Might get a little bit of puckering in the center but you won't even see it once it's put on.